Now, to access the anode rod, we're going to start by taking the top cover off. Again, this unit is already disconnected from power, so I'm going to go ahead and take out the 10 screws holding this top on. Four on the side, six on the top. Standard Phillips head screwdriver, let's get those taken out. Now with the 10 screws taken out, we can go ahead and pop our top cover off. I'm going to go ahead and remove that air filter, set that off to the side, go ahead and pop this over, and we'll let it rest on the side just like that. Careful of the wires, don't let those get pinched or put up against the sharp metal. Anode rods are going to take a 1 and 1 16th inch socket. Now if you're working on a hybrid water heater, you're going to want to use an extension to get down in there. I have a 20 inch extension for my half inch drive ratchet. I'll go ahead and pop that together and we'll get this taken out. If your anode rod has a black grommet around it and you need to take that out, you can and it's okay. This is the one that came out of this water heater. As you can see, I had to pry it out. I used a pair of channel locks and a flathead screwdriver to loosen it up and then take it out. Now it's important to note that there are sharp screws in there, so be careful. Gloves are a great idea. Also the condenser is very delicate. You don't want to hit that and damage it, possibly lower the efficiency of the unit. Once the anode rod is loose, you'll want to grab a hold of that and go ahead and pull that straight out. Now, if the anode rod is hard for you to get your fingers on, go ahead and use a small pair of pliers or a screwdriver to lift up the head of this and then you can grab it. Now, this is the anode rod that came out of that water heater. As you can see, it's nice and smooth and complete. This is the anode rod out of a water heater that was five years old. This is the protection for your tank, and this is why it's important to check and change these as needed. Now to reinstall the anode rod, all you do is reverse the process. Now that you have your anode rod reinstalled in your water heater, it's important to go ahead and turn the water on and check for leaks. Turn the water on, turn a faucet on and bleed the air out of the tank, then check for leaks. Once you're satisfied, go ahead and reassemble the top of the water heater. Anytime we're going to work on anything internal to the water heater, we're going to have the water shut off and we're going to drain some of the water out. We can drain the water out by taking a garden hose and connecting it to the drain valve and running the end of the hose outside to a safe spot. Turn that valve on and let the water drain out. Now on an anode rod, we only need to drain out an inch or so off the top of the water heater. So once the pressure's out, we'll let that drain for about 30 seconds and we should be good. If we're going to be working on elements, we may need to drain half the tank or even the entire tank if we're going to the lower element. Now it's important to note that if you're working on a water heater with the leak sense or leak guard, you may want to put a paper towel down in there to catch any drips. Now when draining or flushing your water heater, think about a couple of things. One, where you're going to drain the water to. If you're draining it outside to a driveway, you're okay. If you're draining it into your grass and the water is hot, it can kill the grass. If you don't have a choice to run the water outside and you have to drain it into a shower or a bathtub in your house, you need to be very careful and monitor that as the water coming out of the tank can easily outflow the drain and cause the fixture to back up. Okay, we have our water back on. We've checked for leaks and we're good. We're gonna go ahead and put the top back on, put those 10 screws back in. Our 10 screws are back in. Our air filter is clean. We're gonna go ahead and reinstall that. Turn the power on and we're good to go.